Hello, as you know, for the rest of the semester, we are going to transition into remote provisioning of the course. And this course, you require to have a Mac machine. So that's why I sent out the poll asking you who needs a Mac machine and who doesn't, who, ha who owns one and doesn't need one to complete the assignments and so on. So the university has agreed to purchase a license for all the students who uh, require a Mac machine or don't have a Mac machine and require one to continue the course, that license is a license for Mac in the cloud. It's called Mac in the cloud. So they already purchased the licenses and you should be getting an email from ITS uh, indicating how to access the machine and so on. So basically, how to access the machine, you're going to get an email. That email will have a list of instructions. But in that email, there are credentials, username and password that you should use. And there is a zip file. So here is a zip file that I received. Oh, sorry, the zip file I received. It's called Mac in the Cloud zip file. When you unzip it, you get a folder that looks like this. And basically that folder has a lot of files that are called RDP. RDP is remote desktop connection. Okay, that's the RDP or the, the, the extension for the remote desktop connection. So basically what you're going to happen is, and they're going to provide you with a username and password for uh, the um, username and password for uh, the uh, the device that you ha will have access to okay okay so let's look at uh, what this connection looks like and how to use it so basically this is uh, the folder uh, that you will receive uh, from ITS and you could see that there are different kinds of sizes of screens okay so basically the bigger the size the slower it's going to be okay so let's pick this size let's look at and connect okay so if you're using Windows a remote desktop connection is very popular in Windows okay and it will allow you to connect to this machine okay so you will get a username and password okay this is my username Okay, so I am authenticating. It will get me into this, um, into this machine. Okay, we just have to wait a little bit, and then what happens is that once I get into the machine, I'll have access to a Mac machine. Okay, here we are. See, I am in inside the box now. You can see this is another box that I have access to. I am remotely connected to it, and I have access to Xcode, right? I have access to Xcode. I created some projects just to test. Let, let's create a new project. So let's start a new project. Let's say we call it uh, next uh, test app. Okay. And make sure that it's Swift storyboard. Next. Put it on the desktop. And then here's the app. Don't fix anything, just click on cancel. You don't need to have an author for the app for the time being. We run the app for the first time. And you can see I can do remote. I'm remotely connected to the device and it's not that bad. It's the speed is really good. I'm able to connect, right? So now let's look at the storyboard. Can I edit the storyboard? Here's the storyboard. While this boots. Mm -hmm. Here is the storyboard. Once the storyboard loads, I will be able to change it and go from there. First time, it just takes a little bit of time to 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 uh, to start the emulator, but after that, it's going to be very fast. So here we are. We go and click on the plus. We add a label. Here's the label. Okay, I drag the label, and you can see there is literally very very low delay. Here it is. And uh, let's add two constraints: the horizontal and the vertical. Horizontal and the vertical constraints. Now run it again. See, it's going to run very fast. See, the second time it runs really, really fast. You just have to make sure it starts. Here it is. Now, the nice, the good news also is that you have access to stop these tasks. Okay. So you have also access to the terminal and you have access to Cocoa Pods. So I could do CD desktop, CD test, the test app that we created. Here it is. I could do pod init. Here it is. To initialize the pod file now let's add alamo fire to it for example i'll do alamo fire 
Alamo Fire, here it is, let's see. I just need to copy uh, the pod description that I need to add. Here it is, this is the pod for Alamo Fire, copy. Uh, open this one, open this file, and then I'll add this to the pod file. Okay, and then we'll save this file, here it is, and then we we'll do pod install. You can see that I'm now, it's gonna create, here's the pod project, you double click, and it has Alm Fire in it now. We can test it, we can try things out. Let's say in the view controller, can we import Alm Fire now? I'll, uh, here it is, import Alm Fire. Let's say let's get requests. And this is edu response as a string. Dot value. Let's try it. Yeah, it's not gonna work because we have. Let's make it HTTPS. It's to avoid uh, adding the transport uh, the transport layer uh, flag in the plist. Okay, here we are, and you can see that we were able to get the UNCC page here. You can see that the API did work, and we we're able to access uh, Alamo Fire and so on. It's a very nice machine. Okay, there are two catches. One, you have to pay attention to what size you pick, right? Because the bigger the size is going to be slower. The other thing is also when you are done using the machine, you have to make sure that you close it. Okay, if I were you, I would just uh, log out or log out of the machine and then make sure that you close the machine. Okay, because you are limited to three hours a day on each machine. If you exceed the three hours, it will, roll all, it will use the, the hours for the next day. Okay. So basically make sure that you, uh, you exit the machine. Okay, so I usually will just log out. All right, I will log out from the machine and then I will stop all the tasks and so on. And then I will close the machine. Okay, so now you have access to a Mac machine and please let me know if you have any questions and I hope uh, that this service makes it an easier transition to remote provisioning of this course. Thank you, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.